Hey guys, so today's video is going to be another electrical video. I haven't done one for a little bit. I'm having a breaker went out apparently. I've already pre-diagnosed this problem and picked up a new breaker to replace it. This is a 30 amp double pole GE breaker. Uh, but my breaker that runs my ceiling mounted heater which is a 5,000 watt uh, 240 volt heater run off a 30 amp breaker that we just put up this year as you've seen in a separate video. It decided to quit working it would always come on no matter what the temperature was in here and in the garage here it's 56 right now you see we're in the middle of November so you know, obviously it's not getting power there's I thought immediately thought there was something wrong with the heater so let's uh, t take the cover off and do a little testing uh, I always recommend disconnecting power and at least turn off the main breaker but this box is fed off of another breaker in the main box so I recommend shutting off your main power, but in order to test it, you will have to have the power on to do one particular test. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws all the way out, and we'll look at it with the box with the cover removed and go, to, go from there. Okay, so this is a breaker here. You see it's not coming on. So the first thing I always want to do is turn this breaker on, and we'll make sure. I recommend having insulated gloves on. We're going to make sure we're getting power here. So we're going to put it on each screw here. You see we're getting nothing. So now we want to test each pole to ground. So we're going to stick one here on the neutral bus. Test this one. So we're getting 123 volts here to ground. And 123 volts to ground here. We're getting 120 volts on both legs because it's being fed back through the heater. But as you can see, you should be reading 240 across here, and we're reading absolutely nothing. So we can only assume that half of the breaker is bad. So let's go ahead and shut that off and hook the wires. Pop the wires out. Pull the breaker out. So now let's do a continuity test on the breaker. So we get the voltmeter set to continuity, which beeps when the electricity flows through. So now we're going to take the breaker, flip it on in the on position, and you need to, this is where the breaker picks up its power off the bus, and it will come out here. And if this breaker is good, the current will flow through here and come out here. So have it on here. You see there's no current flow. Now let's put it on the other side. We're getting continuity. So we're getting continuity on, on this breaker, but not on this side. And all these are is two separate single pole breakers uh, connected together. There's really no difference between this and two single pole breakers, except the switches are interlocked and they're connected together physically. Now let's test this with a brand new breaker just to verify that the breaker is good before we put it in and just to show you what a good breaker will test. So we're hooking it up here and here, beeping, hooking it up here and there. So both poles are now good. So now let's get ready to hook and put a new breaker in. You always want to turn the breaker off because if you're putting it in there, if you're holding a wire or something, these wires will become hot if this is on as soon as it makes contact with the bus bars. And anytime you're working on a breaker box, you always got to be careful with the bus bars in the back here because they're hot at all times if the power is on. That's why I always recommend shutting the power off just to be safe. Wow, that breaker was tripping. Must have hit with the panel when I took it off. And these, these screws are always tight on these breakers so you got to back the clamps off in order for the wire to go, go into it. This is going to be, any brand breaker box is going to be very similar in the wiring and diagnosing this. The only thing different is how the, how the breakers will install. Some of them will screw in if it's an older, like an older square D box. Uh, some of them just go in differently. So you just got to pay attention to that and make sure you buy the exact same breaker to replace it that came out that you took out. Wires in all the way. 
you want to get these pretty tight, not so tight that it strips out, but you want a good bite on that wire because if a wire starts getting loose, it'll start arcing in here and make the breaker kick off. I'm going to point out something else with the old breaker here in a second. I want to I just remember. So like I said, you want to make sure this is off and preferably make sure your main power is off in this box. You get it hooked, just pop it in. So if that was the problem, the heater should come on now. She's starting up. So that took care of it. Now, so now we should be reading 240 across the two legs. We are. It's red 238, so we're right there where it needs to be. The other thing I was going to note that gave away that this was a bad breaker is you know, you kick your breaker on, it always stays on like this. But when I hit this side, it don't want to lock in. But you know, you hit this side, it'll lock in. So obviously, this side's bad. And I could probably take this back and get a new one if it's still. I don't know what kind of warranty they have on breakers, but if it's covered by warranty, this will be considered a bad breaker and be able to replace it under warranty since it's less than a year old. I mean, surely you'd be able to do it. I didn't really think about it at the time when I was. I just happened to be at the at the blue store and thought I'd go ahead and pick up a breaker while I was there. I had to get some. I had to get some really big washers for another project I'm working on. And I just wanted to note, if you're testing a single pole breaker for like a 120 circuit, you'll test the breaker in the continuity way, the same way between here and where it connects back here. It'll test the exact same way. And if you're doing a voltage test, you put one leg of your meter on here to ground, and if it's putting out power, it's going to read 120. If you're not getting no power out of it, and this is on, chances are the breaker's bad. For the single pole breakers, a lot of times they won't stay on. They just just be like a spring almost and you can't get it to come on and stay on. So there's several ways you can test these out. Well guys, I'm gonna get ready to put the panel back on and I just wanted to share this with you because it's a, not really a common repair but breakers do go bad. So I won't write on this that this is a bad breaker but put it in the parts box in case I need something off of it or something, one of these screws or something on there. So you know me, I don't throw nothing away. So all right guys, I'm gonna put the panel back on like I said off camera. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.